sure amazing, isn't he? Amen. Why don't you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tonight, and uh, we're going to look at just a couple verses. I had mentioned to you that um, we oftentimes look at temptation and trials and kind of lump them together, and sometimes they are. Other times we need to realize that as a child of God, we're going to be tempted. And uh, you say, well, uh, I've never been tempted. Well, you're lying. Jesus was tempted. And by the way, temptation's not a sin. Submitting to temptation is where the sin is. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 12, tells us this. Now pay attention to this. It says, wherefore let him that thinketh. Sometimes we get in trouble thinking, don't we? Let him that thinketh, he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Let's read that again. Wherefore, let him that thinketh, he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Sometimes the devil say, you know, if God loved you, he wouldn't make you go through this, because guess what? Nobody else has ever gone through what you've gone through, well, according to that scripture Sure we have. He's gone through it. But God is faithful. Let me say it again. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way uh, to escape. That ye may be able to bear it. Now let me say this. We need to be very careful because I've heard a lot of people take that scripture and say God will not put more on you than you can what? Bear. That's not what that scripture says, is it? It says God wouldn't let us be, watch, let's read it again. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Doesn't say a thing about burden, does it? Am I, some of you looking at me like, preacher, you mess with my theology now. I, I want to know that, that listen, that, uh, God won't put more on me than I can bear. That's not what he said. He said he won't put more on you than you'd be tempted with to, to walk away from. Now, we, we, can have, we can have plenty of burdens. We're to bear one another's burdens, right? And, and so we realize that our power, I can do all things through Christ. But we need to be very careful when we start mixing our theology and say, well, listen, God's not going to put on me more than I can bear. He'll put on, more on you than you can bear, but not more than he can bear through you, right? And so we look at this. We know... That we will face temptation. You're just going to. Listen. Temptation and trials are not always the same. Storms we preached about this morning are not temptation. Temptation. You remember when Jesus was in the wilderness uh, those 40 days. And, and Satan, the Bible said, came and tempted him. And will be tempted as well. And we have all kinds of temptation. Now, obviously our mind goes straight to uh, physical temptation. And the temptation of the flesh. And how... We've got all these billboards and we've got pornography and everywhere you turn there's this sexual sin in front of us. That's part of it. There's a lot of temptation out there. There's temptation not to serve God. There's a temptation not to be faithful to God. There's temptation to lie. There's temptation to steal. There's all these things in front of us if we're not careful. But you know what we often do? We'll, we'll say, well, you know, it's not that bad. At least it's not this. So we have to be careful. Temptation is not a sin, but submitting to temptation is. And if we know we're going to face temptation, do we stand and fight or do we flee? See, that's the question. We think it makes us weak if we flee. But if you'll recall, remember the Old Testament, Joseph. What did he do? He fled. We're to flee. Right? We need to run. According to Scripture, God will provide a way of escape, and that is what you and I must work to find. So if he's going to provide a way of escape, you and I have to, may have to work to find that escape, but we're not commanded to stand and face the temptation. Does that make sense? As a matter of fact, if we're honest, we're probably not going to win if we stand and face the temptation. Uh, the fact is, God's saying, listen, I, I don't want you to stand and face the the temptation, I want you to find the way of escape that I provided for you. And so we must find the way of escape. And so that's what this message is, uh, the way of escape. And I, how do we do it, right? Because it's, it's, again, I think over the years, 
uh, we, we, we know what the Bible says, that God provides a way of escape, and we'll say, just find the way of escape and go, right? Well, how do you do that? I mean, if I were to tell you tonight, go to New York City, I wouldn't tell you that because I wouldn't want you going to New York City. But if I did, and I just said, all right, go to New York City, and you say, okay, would you just get in your car and go? Or would you do the research to find out what roads you need to take to get there? we got to find a way. I, you say, well, I'll go to New York City, but if you don't know how to get there, it doesn't do you any good to say, I'll do it, right? And, and so we'll say, well, I, I, I want to flee temptation. I don't want to be... Uh, to submit to temptation. So how is it that I find the way of escape? Well, I think the Bible tells us here, verse uh, number 12, the Bible said, Wherefore let him that thinketh, he standeth, take heed lest he fall. So the first step is this, examination. We don't like that word examination, do we? Because we have to realize we're not as strong as we think we are. We're not as smart as we think we are. We're not as powerful as we think we are. Listen, May I say this? You need to be careful and I need to be careful that we do not put ourselves in a place where we can fall to temptation. And and the best way to not fall to temptation is to remove yourself from it as soon as possible. And and so here the Bible is telling us we are to uh, examine ourselves in verse 12 And we have to have an an honest assessment. In that examination, I've got to be honest. Because I can think that I'm strong enough to withstand. But the fact is, most of the time, when we think we're strong enough to withstand the temptation, those are the very people that fall to the temptation. The reason for the temptation. Sometimes we put ourselves there, don't we? Sometimes we blame God and we're actually the one. Listen, fellas, if you're, if you're calling women on the phone and, you know, you got that extra conversation at work with that lady and, oh, we're just having lunch together. It's all, on, I mean, it's all innocent. And you know what you're doing? You're putting yourself in that position of temptation. Ladies, that's not any different for you. You used to, you say that to men and, and ladies be like, but you got to tell the ladies that now. When you put yourself in that position, listen, whether you like it or not, the devil's stronger than you are. So the reason for the temptation, it may be our fault, but it may be that God is allowing that temptation to happen in our life to help us grow and to see that we can depend on Him, right? Every temptation is not necessarily a negative thing if we understand that there is a way of escape and we don't have to stand and endure it like we think we do. So we have to assess that the reason for the temptation, the severity of the temptation, and also my attitude in facing the temptation. I must depend on God. I can't depend on my flesh. I cannot depend on my intellect and my wit and my wisdom because that will fail. And so when the Bible says, let, uh, let him thinketh, he standeth, what it's saying is I have to examine myself. And may I say this, the farther you get away from God, the more susceptible you're going to be to temptation. The farther you get away from church, because again, God uses the church to encourage us, the more susceptible you will be to temptation. The farther you get away from God's Word, the farther you get away from the prayer closet, the farther you get away from the things of God, I promise you, the temptation is going to be there. How many of you have ever seen, uh, I don't guess they even have National Geographic now, but you've seen the videos of, they'll have those, those gazelles and, or, or whatever animal it is, and they're all together, right? And, and in a pack, they're pretty safe. But you let one start wandering off, there's a predator that's looking. When that gazelle or whatever that animal is gets away from the pack, and they, they're not, Brother Tim, sometimes they're not even really out there rebelling against the pack. They're just wandering. Eating a little bit, right? Oh, that's good grass right there. No care in the world. 
go down to the go down to the lake there, a little drink. Oh, that's good water. Hot. Next thing you know, big old crocodile's on his head. That's what the devil does, isn't it? You don't have to you, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. That sounds good. I can stay, I can stay home. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Sunday night, oh, I don't know, I, can go, I can worship God out there on the fishing lake. Amen. I mean, I'm enjoying nature. God created this nature. I'm just praising him. Hallelujah, God. Drinking bud dumbers and cussing because the fish won't bite. But I'm, I'm worshiping God out on the, it, right? You know what we're doing when we do stuff like that? We're not even aware. Because you know what I found? When we start getting away from God and the things of God, there's somebody else out there doing the same thing. And it, isn't it amazing how we migrate together? Oh, you got hurt in church too? Me too. Let's talk about it. Oh, you like fishing? You like hunting? You like shopping? You like golf? You like, ah, me too. Oh, and you're a Christian too? Oh, man, look who God put in my life. The Lord has put you in my life so we can get away from God together. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Better have to make an honest assessment where you really are. Because if you, if you think you're too good to fall, too smart to fall, too strong to fall, Sometimes it's wandering off, Brother Jimmy. Sometimes it's pride, right? They can't handle me. I, listen, they're not going to hurt me. And before you know it, snap. Not only that, an honest assessment, a humble approach. The Bible said, Here wherefore let him that thinketh he take, stand to take heed. Assessment. assessment. Lest he what? Fall. So I'm no better than anyone else. You better be careful, careful when you start assessing other people. Start looking. I can't believe they fail. I can't believe. I, that'll never happen to me. I can withstand it. I can, I, I'm stronger than they are. I cannot believe that guy left his wife for this life. That never happened to me. I'm too strong for that. I love God too much for that. I love my wife too much. Better be careful. I'm no better than anyone else. I'm not strong enough to get through it without the Lord. I know that. Better be careful when you start beating on your chest saying that'll never happen to me because you'll be the one. Amen. Been a lot. Listen, Brother Marty's been a lot of, a lot of folks in church. I, listen, I remember you do too. They're kids that tall going to youth meetings, sitting in the front row. Revival comes, they run up to the preacher, man, will you sign my Bible? Right? Sign my Bible. We're proud of them. We'll, well, Jimmy, we'll put them up on the platform and they'll look like little soldiers for Jesus and they'll quote their scripture. We say, oh, they're going to serve God. Then another kid comes in, they're not... Little soldiers for Jesus like ours are. Hang with me now. They're not dressed just right. They don't listen to all the right music like our kids. They can't sing, you know, my favorite bluegrass group or my favorite gospel group. They, they don't know all that. We get that. Glad my kid ain't like that. Hey, my kid will never date my kid will never do that. I'm not going to ever let my kid do that. You know what you did? You put a target about that big on your kid's back. Hello? When you're examining things, the Bible said this, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. He said, you examine yourself. I don't have to examine you. I have to examine me. 
see. And so we have to have a humble approach to it. And then healing acceptance. If I, I will do, do that, that, verse 12, if I will live, verse 12, it will keep me out, out of, of most, most of my messes. Can we agree with that? If I am prideful, I need to repent. If I am living in sin, I need to repent. If, I, if it is by God's design that I go through this temptation, I must endure it until I find the way out. Some temptations are my fault, right? And if they are my fault, and I've made that honest assessment, then I must say I'm prideful, I must repent. If I think that I cannot fall, I'm proud, I must repent. If I have sinned, I must repent. If I am in that place, uh, that it is God's design that I'm in. Because when Jesus was tempted, was that not the design of God? Sometimes temptation, God is allowing it to happen, right? In the life of Job, was that God's design? 100%. So what I'm saying is, if it's by God's design, I must endure it until I find the way out. And then take the way out. Okay? Then number two, uh, I see the example. Verse 13, there hath no temptation. If you believe your Bible, then that verse is true. No temptation. Taking, taking you, but, but such, such as is common to who? Man. So God's saying, I'm not going to put anything on Matt that somebody else possibly in this congregation has gone through but if even if not in this congregation most definitely in the world and if you say well not even that then most definitely the Lord Jesus Christ has been through it can we agree there there's no temptation taking you but such as common to man but God is faithful okay so here's what I'm saying in the example of how to deal with temptation, God is saying, I'm giving you examples in the Word of God. Providential examples. In other words, uh, others in the Bible have, have gone, gone through, through it. Now, if you have problems with that, whatever it is, God has, has given, given us example after example after example in the Word of God. Can we agree with that? You have a problem with pride? God has, a, has an example in the Word of God. You have a problem with wandering eye, fellas. Guess what? God's saying, I, I can show you somebody had one of those, how they got out of it. Everything God's saying, I'm giving you the example to show you that this is not just isolated to you. So we don't have, what I'm saying is we don't have an excuse. Well, the devil made me do it. devil made me do it, preacher. You say, no, that's a lie. You're not assessing it. You're, you're, you're copping out. Okay? We cop out. I, I, you don't understand how weak I am. I do understand how weak you are. But I also know how strong our God is. Right? right? So how did God get them through it? That's what, when I'm reading my Bible, Brother Johnny, and I see something like Joseph. Jo perfect example. Joseph went through everything. I need to not just look and, and read that as well. Look at all the trials, but I need to, when I'm reading my Bible and studying to showing myself approved, right? If Joseph, how did, how did he get through it, right? How did, how, did, how did God make a way of escape? When I look at Paul, when I look at Peter, when I look at John, when, whoever it is, I've got to be examining the Word of God saying, okay, how's this? Not just reading for history's sake. This book will help you. So how did God get him through it? How can God's word get me through it? If I believe the word of God is inspired, which I do, God breathed. And I believe that it is, it is preserved. If I believe it is God's word to me today, then this book will help me in my situation to get through it. Agree? There's also practical examples. How have others I know gotten through it? See, See, listen to me. Listen to me, church. I understand this. 
I understand we live in a day where we have to be somewhat more guarded than we should have to be because if you talk to some, some people, people not, th this church ain't any different than any other. Okay, so I'm not critical. I don't care where you go, people are people. So we're very reluctant, Brother Junior, to start sharing the struggles we go through. Can we agree? Men, we are probably more so because it makes us look weak. But others, I promise you, in this congregation have been through some of the same struggles that you've been through. And so we can gain some perspective from others if we'll ask them. Now again, I know you got to be careful, I'm not saying, but we ought to seek godly counsel from others. And again, all temptation is not, see, let's be honest, somebody right now, because I know how our mind operates, we're automatically going, he's talking about pornography, and he's talking about drinking, and he's talking about, there's so, much, so many temptations that you and I face that are not this. Brother Johnny, we have in our mind, though, anything is, is example, right? I'm gonna, I try to be tr transparent as I can with, with you folks. But Brad, when I get up in the morning, there is a temptation for me not to want to read my Bible. You say, that's not a really a temptation, preach. Sure it is. To him that knoweth to do good, knoweth it not, to him it is what? Sin. Well, what is that? Well, I don't really consider that a temptation. Why not? It's something I know I should do. But what? Because what, here's, here's, here's how I get sometimes, Brother Justin. I get my mind. I don't know. I don't think they had AD, HD. I don't think they had it when I was growing up. Or if they did, they wouldn't tell you you had it. They just beat the fool out of you. Pay attention, right? They'd either do that or they'd make you do that fluoride swish, right? That fluoride swish fixed a lot of problems. But I'm when I get my mind going in a rabbit hole, I just keep digging in there, you know? I'll get I'll start researching something or start watching something, right? And it's like So when I get up in the morning, I'm like, Ooh. I was watching that YouTube video on this right here, and there's another one. I'm gonna get up and watch that thing before I go to the gym. Right? You see where I'm, where I'm going with this? It's not that I'm looking at pornography. I'm, I'm looking at something that's beneficial to me. But the temptation is I'm getting my, my eyes off the Lord. I'm going, oh. I'll just do that. I'll just read my Bible later. But right now, this is on my mind. I, I need to watch this, right? Well, I, somebody else has been through that. So maybe I could go, brother. Let me tell you what's going on with me. Can you give me some advice? I mean, see, I, automatically we go, ah, I can't tell anybody. I've been looking at pornography. Why has it got to go all the way there? That ain't all we deal with. Is it? If that's all you deal with, you got big issues, but you got singular issues. Man, I deal with a lot of temptation every day, and all of it's not wicked, satanic. You see what I'm saying? Bible, the Bible talks about sin and the weight that does so easily beset us. Some things are not necessarily sinful, but they just weigh us down. And it can be a temptation to get more consumed with them than with the Lord. Right? So I'm not, I'm not I don't want to go off the deep end. Everybody going, man, everybody in here is dealing with immorality and probably yes. But that is not all we're dealing with. I'm just saying... 
there are practical examples that we can, even pornography. Fellas, may I say this? You need, this, this phone is dangerous. Computer, dangerous. Best way to not get pulled into that pornography stuff, don't even mess with it. Don't even click. Right? And so there's practical examples in every area, I promise you, God, even today, it's not just biblical where God's saying, listen, look back there. There are people in here that have gone through the temptations that you go through, and God's gone through it, and you ought to seek them out. And then there's personal examples. How has God got you through some temptations in your life that you can draw on and go, he got me through that one? Because what, look what the scripture says. There has no temptation taken you but such as common to man. There's a colon there. And what's that next uh, four words? But God is faithful. So if he's been faithful in the Bible and been faithful to other people and I can look back at my life and see that he's been faithful and get me through temptation, I can trust him on the next one, right? And then finally, number three, real quick, the escape. Let's look at that scripture. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are, what? Able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. So in this scripture, you see the faithfulness in the person of God. God is faithful. Didn't say God will be faithful, God was faithful, God is. Right? He has been faithful in the past, but he is faithful now. And I can trust his word. And if he says in verse 13 that there's no temptation taking me but such is common to man, it's true. If he says he'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, it's true. I can't do this. I can't, he said you could. And then, will with the temptation also make a way of escape? That's true, he's faithful. He wouldn't have said it if it wasn't true. That ye may be able to bear it. What's that mean? We can trust that God and his word are true and can be trusted. Now notice what he said in verse 13. He's saying God is faithful. He'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape? Why? That you're able to bear it. He's saying, I'm going to make a way of escape for you to bear this to get to the escape. If I don't think there's any way to escape it or any way out of it, then I may not be able to bear it. But see, here's the thing. Most people can endure something uncomfortable if they know there's an end to it. Agree? I mean, I can, I can do exercise to the point I'm very uncomfortable if I know I got three minutes left. I can, I can do that. But if you just said, now I want you to go get on a treadmill and run, right? Our football coaches tell us this, Brother Robert, you run until I get tired. But he never got tired standing there with his whistle going, whoo, run, whoo, run. So we'd all vomit and, you know, you can't do that today. But I'm like, if you, till he gets tired, he's not doing anything to get tired, right? If he said, run till you get tired, I know where that is. Or if he said, run five laps, I'll say, well, when I get to number four, I just got one to go. And the Lord's saying, I'm giving you an escape. So that when you're in the temptation, you're able to endure it knowing that there's a way out of it. I can endure it if I know there's a way out. If there's no way out, there's no end to it, I can't endure it. And then I have to have faith in the path of God. See, God has a plan. 
And in that, I can endure because God has allowed it. So, how many, several years ago, we took our young adult class to the, uh, what was that, escape room. So, we divided up in two groups. And they put you in this room. They lock the door behind you, and it's dark. And they'll say, you got to find this way of escape to get to the next room to find the clue to find the way of escape to the next room and you have a time limit Well, Chad, we're, we're just not smart. I mean, we had the intellectually challenged group, let's be honest. And so at some point in time, it was just kind of like, just let us out. Just take our money. I get it. We wasted our money on this thing. Just let us out. Let me go, let me go eat popcorn wait on another group to get out. That's where I was at. So it was like everybody's, oh, let's do this. And I'm just, I'm leaning up against the wall going. Because there's no way out. Is that how you feel sometimes? <laughs> just might as well submit to the temptation because there's no way out. Just get it over with. No way out. Well, God's saying, listen, I'm, I got a door for you. Now you might have to hunt a little bit to get to it. But don't submit to the temptation because I'm faithful. And God's saying that because I'm faithful, I'm providing a way out. You just See, we want everything handed to us, don't we? We like, here's your way out, sir. God's saying you might have to work for the way out, but it's there. I have to endure a little while. But if I know that I can get out, I can endure. I'm not, I didn't think I was claustrophobic. Is anybody claustrophobic in here? I didn't think I was. You ever, anybody ever been in one of those MRI machines? That is the worst thing ever. I don't know who invented them, but I, I'll guarantee you right now, they need to be in Guantanamo Bay. And the first time I had to go get an MRI on my shoulder, I went to the this Davie County Hospital back when it was in Moxville. And so they said, go around to the back. I don't know about you, when they tell you at the hospital, go around to the back. <laughs> so I go in the back, and the, the lights were off. There's just, I'm like, I, it looked like a horror movie. You know how them horror movies start off with the lights out and nobody's there and you go, hello? <laughs> so finally I go and I find the lady at the desk. I said, I'm here for MRI and she said, okay, you go outside on the loading dock and there is a trailer there. It's a portable MRI machine. Okay. So you I roll up in there, and the guy said, he's behind this glass, and he said, okay, you're going to lay on this thing and put this cage over your face. He said, are you claustrophobic? I said, no, sir. <laughs> I never, well, Eddie, I've never been to where I, something was this in your face like that. He said, you, I said, no, sir. He said, okay, I'm going to give you this buzzer. And if you get claustrophobic, you hit that buzzer, and I'll pull you out. I said, okay, you won't need it, though. So they shoved me up in that tube. 
and I opened my eyes, and that top was right. I, uh, am I lying? It's not. If it was that far away, I'd be like, that ain't too bad. That thing right here. And it was hot in there. And I had, there was stuff in there. There were demons in there with me. There was all kinds of bad stuff going on. And I'd, I started getting claustrophobic. So I realized I was claustrophobic. And I thought many times about hitting that button. Because I thought this. Here's what I thought. Here's, here's how your mind does you. They got you in a tractor trailer at the back of the hospital. And you might hit that button and that guy is really not there. He's probably on a coffee break right now. <laughs> right? And so I laid there with that thing on my chest and I thought, and I did, I remember, I prayed, I said, God, you, if I hit this button, this means I got to do this all over again. And I, I, I need help. I need, God, I need help. I, I need help. And I end up falling asleep in that thing. Or God knocked me out. He might knock me out. He might just knock me completely. Because I was. And you could, you could see, right? I could see light. It wasn't like. But I, I didn't feel like I could escape. I felt like if it got too bad, I couldn't escape. And I wasn't sure that that person that I was supposed to hit that button was going to help me escape. If I'd known I could escape, I might have could have, right? If I was confident. Well, God's saying, listen, I'll provide a way of escape for you. So you can, what, endure it. He's not going to let you down. You can, you can withstand the temptation knowing that God's saying, I got, I got an exit door right over here. It may take you a little while to find it. You may have to endure for a little bit, but it's there. And if you want to, see, that's key. If you want to, there it is. You don't have to fall to the temptation. You just have to find the exit door. That's a way of escape. Let's stand. Bow our heads tonight. Maybe God's spoke to your heart about some things you're going through, some temptation. Like I said, it doesn't always have to be moral things. That's where our mind normally goes, but it may just be some... Mary's the life you need some help with.